Hello, beautiful souls. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Those of you who are viewing this podcast will see a stormy background. But no, that's only because the topic we wish to speak of is stormy. And even though it may be stormy, it's filled with beauty. You can sense that beauty if you're seeing. You can sense that beauty if you're listening. We, of course, sense it by connecting to you in what you would call the ethers. So thank you for that connection. Today's topic is the war in heaven. We want to talk about winning it, who actually won, and how it affects you. See, many, many great traditions talk about a fall, the fall of man, the fallen angels, the darkness that was supposedly took place when certain angels separated from the divine, had their fight, then we make those angels bad, Lucifer, Satan. We kind of gloss over the idea that it's all God. <laughs> yeah, Alpha, Omega, beginning and end, creator. So it wasn't like, oh, these bad entities were out there and then God showed up and had a fight with them. It wasn't like that at all. Those entities that we label as bad are aspects of God. Well, then how can they be the devil? Oh, and then we get these big mental gyrations. Well, they're there to tempt us because this way we'll have to obey and if we don't obey then we get all this nice punishment because we got a god that wants to tempt us and make us punish because that's how it works <laughs> hopefully by now you're ready to let go of the punishing god if you're not go out and get punished more <laughs> hopefully you could start to receive the lovingness of the divine hopefully you could feel it in these videos hopefully you can send it around but nonetheless, this imprinting about this fall and this division and this punishment runs very, very deep. So we wish to speak of it today. You see, the channel Peter has become aware due to the book he is about to release on how we are all fractals of the divine. We are all aspects of God individuated consciousness so that creation could expand you see if you're everything and everything that you're in is made of you then really there's not a lot there that you don't already know so how do you get to know more well god figured this out by realizing i say he but it's an it so call it she that god could individuate its own consciousness and when it individuated it could give it free will those little aspects and a little bit of forgetfulness that they're connected to everything so then they could go out and create whatever it is they choose to create and all the permutations would build upon new experiences that were outside of the whole yet still part of the whole and that would then literally expand creation it's a beautiful thing if you realize that we are the eyes and ears of God, that as we have experiences, we complete them, we expand creation. It's a beautiful thing. But let's go back to some of the early individuations. Now, imagine what it is like for a moment to be separated from all you've known. And then to be given free choice. You mean I can do anything? Now, that separation creates what we call densities. You feel the pressure of more dense energy because you're not in the oneness field as much. You're not connected to source. You're not are understanding you are source. So it feels compressed and dense. That and alone is a little traumatic. The birthing, so to speak, process of being individuated, there's a compression to it. And that causes a lot of 
feelings, particularly because we're separate now. Like, what's going on? I don't know. This is new. I wanted to be individuated, but now I am. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> so we have this individuation. Now, all of a sudden, we have free choice. And with that comes all the permutations that are possible. Now, remember, when first individuated started, there was no right or wrong or good or bad. It was just choices to make. And some of what we would call the first wave, the angels, the archangels, made certain choices. And other ones made other choices. And those who made some of the choices were not happy with the choices that the other ones were making. And this is literally the cause of the war in heaven. Oh, you need to do this because it's more divine, more holy. You see, the angels that were prescribing this were not able to deal with their own separation, their own fears of compression. And so they turned outward and said, try to control others and say, hey, do this and you'll be right. And then you'll have all this. What they were saying was a bad thing to do is exactly what they ended up doing, which was to control others rather than feel their own experiences. So we had what we would call the divisions into the darkness and the light. Okay. And these divisions would then grow as people or excuse me, entities would attach themselves to those points of view and experience them more fully. And eventually, it got to where it would be warlike. Now, Peter understands this because when he, and when we say he, we're really talking about ourselves, but he understands things through himself. So he, his consciousness, his essence emerged. It was a new soul. And first he had to go through his own feelings. And that in itself was traumatic. Like, I'm separate. That in itself implies almost being cast out, especially when there's other entities around saying, hey, look, you were cast out. Okay. And then looking further, you have different entities or angelic hosts, as we call them, talking about different paths that can be taken. Now, some of those paths include playing the game of power and dominance. And why not? You're in a different place where you're no longer one. Why not try a pecking order? That could be a fun game to play. You look at it in all our sports. People love sports. And yet behind much of it is competition. And the competition is to succeed or be the best or to win. And it drives some. And we, we laud the heroes who do that. There are sports idols. And it's really no different in the heavens. It's like, oh, let's try a competition and pecking orders and stuff like that. Now, what happened is when the soul that is Peter, that is us, emerged, it was attracted to this kind of stuff. And this created some backlash because, again, if you don't fully experience something, you don't clear it, you don't have the wisdom, being a new soul and still dealing with the separation and, and the thought of being more compressed and dense, he said, all right, well, okay, I'll figure out the stuff in the pecking order. And so he went to what we would call the dark side. Now, the angels that are supposedly on the light side, shamed. Oh, look at you. You're bad. You're wrong. You're doing all these horrible things. Look at you. You're bad. All right. Now, this created a couple of interesting things. One of them is that in the current time frame that Peter's consciousness sits in, as he starts to connect to us and connect to all that is, he has memories and awareness of, aren't you the same energies and entities that shunned me and made me feel bad for my choices? How should I trust you now? How can I let you be my guide? Now, we bring this up to you because you will be experiencing similar things because as a consciousness ascending, you've been around by what we would call a long time by your standards. You've been around for a long time. You've been around the block. You've played a lot of different roles. You've seen both sides of things. 
So now as you can come into the oneness field, you will find unconscious programs running up. I can't trust them because they shunned me. They made me bad. They made me wrong. Why should I listen to them now? And of course, what ascension is, is climbing out of those lower densities. You see, the whole game was played of separation, of density, of pecking orders. It was all played to increase experience. And we have all kinds of experiences, and now we know certain ones are way more pleasurable, and those will usually involve cooperation and love. So we've learned that. Now we want to climb out of it, but it involves trusting some of those that damned us and condemned us. And you see this in many, many popular religions, you know, where, I mean, you, you want to think it's only radical religions. Like in the, in the United States culture, we like to blame Islamics for being terrorists, even though many of those terrorist organizations are funded by our own government. Uh, so we blame those, those Islamic terrorists, totally bypassing centuries and centuries of the Christian crusades where they were just running in and killing people in God's name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't find Jesus here. Find it at the end of the sword. Father warriors, some aspects call them those who righteous onward Christian soldiers. <laughs> and that's deeply rooted in many of us. And it's all going to fade away because we're moving into this unity of six connective consciousness but there has to be a trust to get there now peter personally felt this as he was become aware and contemplating what was it like to be at the fall of heaven when he was trying to decide what to do next and he was shunned and cast out by one side and he just basically gave them the middle finger and said screw you i'm gonna go try this other game for a while and he played what we would call the darkness game for a long time and this of course means he had a lot to clear and still does but the beauty of it is is that because he had those experiences and he has doing and is doing his clearings he can now share with you what it's like. So it doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. It doesn't matter what you've done. Just experience. And it was all done cooperatively. Yes, nothing comes into anybody's consciousness without their permission. We've been trying to tell you this over and over that you are sovereign and nothing comes to you without you permission it at some level. Now, maybe you're beaten down from your consciousness so much that it's unconscious that you think bad entities are happening to you, bad people are around you, and you're just a victim. And that's the way we go when it's hard to deal with, oh my God, I have responsibility for this. But yeah, do. Uh, this may turn off a lot of people. I don't want to go to somewhere where I'm the bad person. Well, yeah, you carry it just like you carry all the goodness. You carry all that is in you. And it's only in the lower dimensionalities that we separate it, call it good and bad. It's all just experience and growth, and it's all done cooperatively. Whether you choose to admit it or not, your ascension will be claiming your power. And when you claim your power, you'll have to deal with the mental inputs of, oh my God, I've judged these behaviors. And that, of course, is only done by feeling and experiencing. You feel whatever pains you caused or received, and it's clear, it's done. Forgiveness has taken place, because when you feel it, it's no longer energetically present. There's nothing left to forgive. So as Peter steps into these next levels of his expansion and his ascension, he's having to deal with trust. Trust of, can I really believe that these good angels have my best interest in mind when at a certain point they were just condemning me? And now here's the key. It wasn't that they did any of that. It was that he was uncertain of what he was doing. So he created a place for the external to reflect, oh, yes, you're being condemned because he was uncertain and unsure. And now he's dealing with lifetimes of that, playing the darkness out and coming to the good that he calls it. But in reality, it's just finishing the experiences, whether you label it good or bad, and then moving into the oneness, the all that is. So that's his progress. Now, 
does this mean for us as a planet? You see, we played roles for a long time to have these experiences, and now they're being played out around us. So we could be seeing, reflecting what is inside of us. Now, what's happened is some of the entities who chose to play what we would call the darker roles, like Peter used to play in, in long ago times, if you want to be linear about it. Some of them are still enjoying the power game. Woohoo, yeah. <laughs> and so even though they showed up now with the thought that they would learn and then let go and the planet could ascend easier, they're like, uh, 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 they're fighting that primal brain. It's like the analogy Peter always uses is, do you think a dinosaur is just going to roll over and lay down and say, I give up? Yeah, it's a reptilian brain. It's old. It's afraid. No, it's going to go on a rampage. And since it's a dinosaur, it's big. And that rampage is going to be ugly. And that's what we're seeing played out around us in all the wars and the health scares and the economics, blah, 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 blah. So those dinosaurs are not laying down. They're choosing to play the game to the bitter end. If I can't win, nobody can win because that'll be a win because at least I've controlled that when I feel like I have no control. <laughs> so now, as we see that external fight going on around us, the opportunity presents itself to look into the internal fight. Oh, how have I played in this role? Have I been the righteous side? Which really is just a side and in a certain sense hypocritical because it's just saying oh no no i'm right and you're wrong even though it says oh i've got all these great values to be right about like love and kindness but i'm right about it well, you see the extreme of it uh we'll talk about uh people who blow up clinics where medical procedures are performed to terminate babies now we're not condoning any of that the blowing up or the terminations. No, these are choices people make. They understand, at least on a soul level, that they're making these choices to have this experience. But they're still on one side of right and wrong or on one side of being a victim, which is what Ascension is all about, leaving all that behind. Because you see, oh, that's a part of me. Let me feel it. Let me clear it. Let me experience it so I can transcend it. So, you know, I love all these signs that you see in the highway. Jesus doesn't kill babies, but I kill doctors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's kind of how it is. So all that judgment has to go. And it will. It'll unfold naturally or we'll make a lot of chaos out of it because we're going to cling to it desperately because we're competitive. I want to win. And you don't win by climbing out. You don't play, oh, I'm king of the hill. I get to ascend. I get to move up a level now. No, it's not like that. That's how the video games express it. That's how we express it in sports. No, you don't kill the dragon and become the king. You love the dragon because it's a part of you. And then you're loving it. You take all the powers of the dragon into you because you've had them anyway. Then you see that you were just that dragon. It's just externally a plea of can you love what's in yourself? Can you love the separation, the feeling, the cutoffness, the judgments you've received, the judgments you've given? Can you love all that in yourself? And when I say love it, I don't mean a mental thing. I mean physically express it. Say you are welcome here, fear terror you are welcome here and give it enough love that it can have voice and expression that's what it all comes down to so if you want to look at the war of heaven it's totally inside you and it wasn't all these big angelic characters who did things and then we had falls or rises it's not like that at all but that's how we express it because the victors wrote the history and then we have to make it seem okay <laughs> because we keep playing this game and we did this all through the dark ages that we're following in earth right up until now and we're entering the golden age 
And this is our opportunity to release it. So, are you ready to stop the war? I'm all for peace. Well, can you stop it inside yourself by stopping the judgments of those who you're against? Because they're doing war. Because internally, that's inside you as well. It's crazy. Can you love the dragon? Can you love yourself? Then there is no war anymore. There's only unity and wholeness and understanding. It means you have to look at all those dark, scary places and love them enough to express them. And then you'll learn the wisdom there. Then you'll be free. And then if you want to call yourself the victor, you can, but mainly you're just going to call yourself more. I'm that galactic citizen now. I'm part of the all that is now. I'm connected now. And yeah, it can be fun to watch movies and TV shows with villains and wars and plots. But I don't need to play that game anymore because I'm no longer vibrating at that conscious level. I'm more. That's what makes you ascended. That makes you a mystic. That what makes you a channel. Are you ready? I hope so. Because it means laying down your sword and not just laying down your sword so you can be the victim of other people with swords. It means laying down your sword so you can love them for having their sword and love yourself for being the victim. Or vice versa, love yourself for being the one with the sword and love them for laying down to be the victim. It doesn't matter. It's got to happen on all fronts, the military, <laughs> in the boxing ring, on the football pitch. <laughs> It's got to happen all across the board, and it is. It's starting to happen. You're starting to see that. We hope this message has helped you understand the bigger picture play, that you win the war in heaven the moment you realize you are the war in heaven, and you surrender to everything you've felt and everything you've done, feeling it fully, releasing it, and allowing that divinity, that connection to come back. As you crawl up the densities, you become more connect. More of what you learn becomes input into the God source. And you have more input from the God source to you. Let it in. Drink it. It's way better than fighting it. Stay blessed. Hello, I'm Peter D. Thank you so much for viewing this message. I'm humbled by everything that's happened since I've been working to share ascension and awakening with people. And I'd like to invite you to come on that train too. The simplest thing you can do is please like and subscribe this video. That will help the YouTube algorithm put this video in front of more people so the message will get out there. And of course, you just carrying the beautiful energy that you are is the most amazing thing you can do for uplifting the planet. So thank you for being that. Thank you for sharing your beautiful time with me on this video. And if you feel motivated, I'm grateful to accept any donation you choose to give. Please see below for links. It'll help. Stay blessed.